Jeremy, welcoming Lionel Henry. Hey. So I work at Dust Studio in the, the Tidyverse team, and uh, today I'll be talking about interactivity and programming in the Tidyverse. So this is about the notion of uh, data masking in R, uh, which is this idea that uh, you can blend the data with the workspace so that you can work with the, the columns in your data frames as if they were uh, objects in, uh, in your workspace. And I think that's a really great and unique feature of R, uh, that it helps to turn ideas into software because you're uh, directly working with your data rather than worrying about the data structure uh, that it is in. On the other hand, uh, it does uh, make some things more difficult, and in particular, uh, it makes it more difficult to reuse code, to write functions about, uh, around uh, data masking functions. So we have made uh, progress in the tooling uh, to solve that issue, and, uh, and also in the teaching, in our approach to teaching it. So if you have uh, learned a little bit about tidyeval before, uh, we'll see some new concepts here. Uh, the concept that you have learned before are still uh, relevant. We still uh, use the bang bang operator all the time when we create our tools, but uh, this should be considered uh, lower level tools. And now we are going to see higher level approach. All right. So I would like to talk a little bit about uh, the the history of data masking in R. Um, so in 1988, uh, the Blue Book was published that defined uh, the S language, which is the ancestor of R. And a lot of the things that we still use uh, were in that book. And one of the first manifestation of data masking uh, was in the attach function, which allows you to uh, take a data set and attach it to the search path uh, the same way that you do with a package. So that's a little bit different from data masking, but it's still the idea that uh, the data frame is the, is the important scope uh, and that if you are working interactively with R, you want to, uh, to be able to work with the data directly. So attach is not the recommended way of working with, uh, with data for now. But a few years later, uh, the, the white book was published and it was about all of the statistical modeling functions that we still use in R now. Uh, so the, like the LM function. And the way that that works is that they took uh, a data frame and a formula. And in the formula, you have data masking. You can, you can refer to your, uh, to your columns directly. And then uh, R was uh, uh, being developed in the 90s. And uh, Peter Dalgard, uh, who is a member of R Core, published the frame tools package, uh, which was really foundational for R and for the tidyverse and for, uh, for Dplyr. And so as you can see, you had the, the subset frame function, the select frame function, and modify frame. And the, these are, um, so these are the, the same kind of function that we have in the player, like filter, select, and mutate. And you could uh, use data masking to filter rows. Uh, you could select columns and uh, modify uh, columns inside the data frame. And that was the first apparition of selections. Uh, which is a little bit different from uh, data masking. Uh, so in particular, you can use the colon operator to select a range of variables that are contiguous in your, in your data frame and other features that make it really easy to, to select columns. So these were integrated in R. Uh, subset and select were merged into one single function. Uh, modify became transform. And then uh, there were relatively few developments uh, on data masking in base R. Uh, we had the, the with function was included and in the, the within function a few years later. But by and large, uh, most of the developments happened in package space. So in 2006, uh, the data table package was released for the first time. And um, what one of the things that it did uh, besides performance is that it allowed you to use data masking uh, in I to subset rows. And you could use uh, data masking in J, but also selections uh, to select columns. Then 2014, Dplyr was released. Uh, so very similar to the, to the ideas that were in the frame tools package. Um, but 
with the objective to really push data masking in a, in a much more comprehensive API. So what was the reason that uh, development of the data masking slowed down in base R? I think we can find the answer in the, the documentation topics for subset and transform. And if you read those, you will see uh, this warning that uh, they are really convenience functions intended for use interactively, uh, that the non-standard evaluation can have an unanticipated consequences. So I think what they mean by that uh, is that it's about the, the ambiguity between data variables, so variables that are in your data frame, and env environment variables, those that are in your workspace and that you have assigned with the arrow operator. And this ambiguity causes two different problems that are distinct but related. Uh, first, you can get unexpected masking uh, from data variables. And secondly, um, data variables cannot get through function arguments, and that makes it difficult to create functions around data masking functions. And so we are going to see uh, solutions that we offer in the Tidyverse to solve these issues. So first, about unexpected masking. That's about the problem. Uh, so let's say that uh, you have created uh, an object N in your workspace, it contains a number, and you have a data frame with an X column. And you want to modify it, create a new column that divides the column X by the number uh, inside of N. And the problem is that the data frame is really a moving part. And if you are using the same code with different data frames, maybe they don't contain the same, uh, the same columns. And if you, uh, if you get uh, a data frame that has a column n, then uh, n, the, the column has precedence over the object in the workspace. The column masks uh, the, the object in the workspace, and you get the wrong result. So that's not. Uh, that's not a big problem if you are working interactively through your script uh, doing an analysis because you know uh, what kind of objects you have in the workspace. Uh, you know the, the columns that are in your data frames. Um, but if you are writing production code, that can be an issue because um, uh, your, your same code will be uh, used across many different data frames uh, from different users. So the solution here is to be explicit when you are writing production code, and to do that, you use the dot .data pronoun or the dot .inf pronoun. And these pronouns are available in all of the data masking functions in, in uh, the tidyverse. And so here, we, you are, uh, again, modifying the data frame, but this time, you are uh, dividing dot .data $x by dot .inf $n. And now we, have, we are completely explicit about where the data comes from, and we have resolved the ambiguity. So the second problem that uh, data variables cannot get through function arguments. That makes it difficult to create functions around uh, tidyverse pipelines. So let's say that we have uh, this mean by function uh, where we uh, have some data. We group by one variable, and we summarize uh, by taking the, the average of another variable. And so we take one data frame and two variables that we uh, pass to uh, group by and summarize. And we get, and so if we call uh, this mean by function with data variables like species, uh, we get this error that column by uh, is unknown. So what happens here uh, is that inside the function we are referring to the, this function argument, which is an environment variable by. And when you uh, call the function, you are supplying a data variable species, and that that's how R gets confused and it doesn't know what you really meant. So the solution is to, um, is to tunnel the data variable through the environment variable. And to tunnel a data variable, you use uh, this new operator, uh, curly curly, uh, which was added in Arlang uh, last year. And that, that allows uh, the, the color of your function to use a data variable, and it will get forwarded through the uh, environment variable and evaluated in the data frame as it should. So, one other issue that you might have is that we have uh, hard-coded the result name here. Uh, we have given it the name of AVG for average. But maybe you want to uh, have something that, uh, that changes uh, with the input. So very new feature in Arlang that uh, just got here uh, last week is that you can now use glue strings on the left-hand side of the walrus operator. 
so the syntax is a lot, little bit different from the glue package because you have to use uh, double curly and that allows you to tunnel a data variable through the uh, inside the string and then uh, you get uh, you get a more relevant uh, result name in the resulting data frame. Um, one issue with tunneling is that it causes data masking to propagate. Um, so uh, now your function is also a data masking function because you know you can uh, supply data uh, data variables in it, and that means that the users of your function uh, will have to know about that. They will have to know about the ambiguity. Uh, if they are writing production code, they will have. Uh, to know about uh, the curly curly operator, uh, if they want to write a function ar around your, your function. And so one question is, could we, uh, could we make, could, is there a, a way to easily create functions but without the, the data masking propagation? So if we go back to the dot data pronoun that we have subsetted with the dollar operator with uh, constant column names, uh, species and sepal dot with, and let's say that now you want to uh, subset column names uh, which are in variables. Then you use the double bracket operator as you would in normal R code. And now that means that, you, uh, that we are using uh, environment variables that contains the, the column names. And so you build your function around that. You take your data frame, you take uh, the two variables, and now you have a completely normal function that takes column names as strings and you don't have any data masking anymore, which can, be, uh, which can be better when you are working in an organization and working with uh, coworkers which maybe don't know about data masking, the tidyverse, or, or all that. And in this case, if you want to customize the, the result name, uh, you, you use again uh, the glue string, but this time with the normal uh, single curly uh, operator. So, that's how you deal with these two problems. You, if you have uh, unexpected masking and you're worried about that, use the dot data and dot inf pronoun to de disambiguate. And uh, if you want to create functions uh, and deal with the problem of uh, uh, taking arguments which might contain data variables, you tunnel them with the double curly operator or you subset dot data with the double bracket if you want to take column names as strings instead. So what about selections? Uh, as we have seen, selections are a bit different. They are kind of a separate sub-language, uh, especially in the, the tidyverse functions. And the reason for that is that data variable in selections, uh, so for example, if you use the select function in the player, but also pivot wider, pivot longer in tidy, use selections. And in this selection, data variables represent their locations inside the data frame. And that's actually the reason why that you can use the, uh, the colon operator, because if you say colon uh, name, colon mass, that's really the same as writing one colon three, and you create this sequence uh, of locations from which uh, we know where to get the variables from. But that means that ambiguity is much less an issue uh, when you are working with selections. So let's say that you have a character vector of column names, uh, which is assigned in the name uh, environment variable. And the Star Wars data frame also contains a, data vari uh, a column that, that's called name. But if you write select name, that's, that's a data variable. So it will be, you will be selecting uh, the column name. And if you want to disambiguate and use the character vector that you have saved in your object in your workspace, uh, you use all of. So if, you've, uh, if you are familiar with ONOF, uh, OLOF is a new function that's a little bit stricter and that has better properties. Um, it, like if you, when you use OLOF, uh, it means that you want, you are expecting all the columns in, uh, in the character vector to be in the data frame and if they are not there, you will get an error. Whereas ONOF was throwing a warning instead. So we, you have a little bit uh, more stricter here. Right, so if you, have a, uh, if you want to create a function around the selection function, you uh, just take uh, the data frame uh, and then the, the variable, uh, a variable containing the, uh, the column names, and you just use select all of and this, the function arguments. 
and then you have a normal function and you, you also can uh, call them with, uh, with character vectors. But you can also use the double curly operator. And in this case, it means that you are tunneling the selection uh, fr from uh, across the function. And in this case, uh, in the same way that if you use the, the, the curly curly uh, with a data masking uh, verb, and you create a data masking function, then uh, your function becomes a selection function. And that means that your user can call, uh, can use the selection helpers like start with. So uh, that's it. That's, uh, those are the new features and um, uh, the, that, that we'd like, uh, like, I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> sorry, I'm pressing that. Um, yeah, so if you want to disambiguate um, the, uh, the data variables from the environment variables, you use the data, uh, you use the dot data pronoun and the dot inf. If you have data masking, if you are using a selection function, you use all of, and in case you want to tunnel data variables and selection, you use the curly curly operator. Thanks. Thank you, Daniel. We do have some questions here. Yeah. Um, the first one says, are these new features to replace or be alternatives to Kuo and, uh, and Bang Bang? No, like, um, like these are higher level features um, that are meant to be easier to use for, for people that don't, don't want to get into metaprogramming and learning uh, these hard skills. But all the lower level programming tools are, are here to stay and we uh, we use them to, to build these tools ourselves. Great. Um, also, uh, can you clarify the difference between all of and everything with select? I'm sorry? The, the difference between the all of that you just showed and yeah. everything. Yeah, so everything uh, means that you want to select everything. And all of means that you are only selecting the, the columns that are inside uh, the character vector that you supply. Thank you. Um, the last one I have here, is there a timetable for implementing um, curly, 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 or super stash? Uh, no, no, that's not, that's not planned anymore. Not planned, okay. Uh, one more, it says, uh, is all elements of this syntax supported by dbplyr and sparkly R? Um, sorry, can you repeat this? Um, are these uh, su uh, supported by dbplyr and sparkly R? Yeah, the, uh, dbplyr for sure, sparkly R, I don't know um, about that, but I, I would guess so, because they are probably using the diva. I agree, yeah. And last one. Does uh, curly uh, curly work with uh, multiple variables? Uh, no, only only one function argument. So you are really it's really uh, meant to use uh, with function arguments inside functions only. Great. Thank you so much. Appreciate Thanks. it.